All right, okay, so welcome to today's lab. So today we will try to use uh, QuickSight, which is a BI uh, tools on AWS to explore data in Redshift, which is a data warehouse on AWS. So uh, we already know that QuickSight is a business intelligence tool that can be used to visualize and also analyze data, especially for the relational data. And data warehouse like Redshift provide powerful query capabilities that we can run very um, complicated queries on data warehouse. And today we also want to try some artificial intelligence functions or those AI functions on QuickSight. And the data that we are going to use is the ticket database, so which is a sample Amazon Redshift database. Uh, you can go to this URL and to check the details of the data set. So basically it has three major tables. The event table contains each single event, okay, each single inf event information so that we have the opera, pop events, those stuff. And for each single event, okay, uh, we have a list table. So that contains that uh, for each row that is represent a listing of batch of tickets that are sold for a specific event. Okay, so that means the relationship between listing and event is one event has multiple listing. Okay, multiple list listing uh, refer to one event, so one to many relationship. Uh, we also have the sale table, so that is one to many relationship, and this is an error, so this should be listing should be one. And also sale table should be many. Okay, so the sale table, each row is a sale of one or more tickets for a specific event offered in a specific listing. Okay, so that is one to many relationship. And if you click those uh, links, you can see uh, how they are linked together. So they have, this one is event ID equals event ID. This one is list ID equals list ID. And in addition to that, we also have other tables like category, which shows which category those events belong to, like opera, um, pop, etc. We also know the place of those events, like state, city, etc. Uh, we can also know the user information, so they can be either sellers or they can be buyers. Okay, so that's enough for our data. So let's try to explore this data uh, in uh, QuickSight. So let's go to QuickSight and let's create a new data set. So here for Redshift, there are two options. Uh, so if the QuickSight is connected to the same um, Redshift account, you can try this auto discovered. If you are using the QuickSight to analyze a Redshift that is hosted by a separate AWS account, then we need to use on this way. And that is what we are going to do today. So let's click Menu Connect. For the data source, let's just call it Ticket. We are choosing the public uh, network. The host URL is posted on Canvas, so we can just copy and post, paste that host URL. Uh, the pod, we are using the default pod. The database name is called DEV. Username, demo, and password is also on Canvas. Okay, so now let's validate the connection. That's great, and let's create this data source. Uh, so here you need to choose the first table. So here you have to pay attention that the first table should be the table has the most detailed information. Otherwise, if you choose the other tables at the first table and you join the most detailed table to those tables, you will have duplicated records and you'll have wrong analysis results. So in this case, the sale table contains the most detailed information. So let's choose sale table first. And let's preview the data. So now we can see the author, the table of the sale table. And the next, we want to connect sale table to list table. So let's add data, choose list table. 
And here we can choose the join format. So normally we can choose the inner join so that only the match data will be returned. And here, remember that that is primary key to foreign key. Okay, list ID to list ID. And let's apply. And now we can see the table become wider. Okay, that is because we now brought more information in the current view. All right, so let's continue. So now let's join the event table. So you can see by default, uh, QuickSight is trying to join event to seal, which is not right because we should join event with listing, okay? Uh, if you remember that the logic between event and also listing. And here, let's also use inner join. Again, primary key to uh, the form key. Okay, so event ID to event ID. Okay, uh, so you can see that now we have more and more table being joined in the view. Again, if you cannot remember, if you're not sure, go back to the diagram. And if you move your mouse those to those lines, and you will see that how those tables should be joined. And next, let's also bring the category and also a venue. So this time, let's bring those two tables together at the same time. So category should be joined to the event. Okay. And here in the join, cat ID equals cat ID and apply. And the venue should also be joined to the event. Okay. And in the join, venue ID equals venue ID and hit apply. Okay, uh, so it is very important that we join those tables in the with following the right uh, relationship. So let's double check. So inner join listing ID equals listing ID. Event inner join event ID equals event ID. Venue ID equals venue ID and also category ID equals category ID. Okay. Uh, looks everything looks great. Okay, so now we have this very very wide table, so we don't need all the columns. So let's just select the columns that we really need. So let's bring the cell ID, which is the primary key of the cell table, and we bring that one because that is very important. That kind of determined all the structure of the other tables. Let's also bring the price being paid for each single sale and also a sale time which is you can see automatically uh, convert into a date format let's also bring the list id and also the price total price listed so that total price that we want to sell however for each single sale we only sold this number of the price so we cannot uh, we never can reach the total price being listed but that is just our goal um let's also bring uh, the event id okay which is uh here and also let's bring the city and also category okay uh again next let's also change those date format so for the city we can choose this geographic row which is city okay so that we can visualize those information on the map and for the event ID, uh, I would change that one to string so that will be catalog data. Price is decimal, that's right. Uh, listing ID, I will choose string. Um, price paid, that's decimal. Sale ID, I will also choose that as a string so that make sure those are catalog data. All right, so now let's look at the table. So here we can see for this event, it was in New York, okay, that has this list. And for this list, we have those two seals. Okay, so we have those uh, two seals. And we also see that uh, for this event, we have those three lists, okay? And we have those uh, seals, okay? So those multiple separate seals. All right, so now let's 
um, convert the data into Spice Engine so that it will be faster to visualize, and we can start our visualization. Okay, uh, so for some reason, press pip is now considered as dimension, so let's convert that into metros. Uh, let's also wait that all the rows are imported into Spicy. All right, so now we can see all the rows has been successfully imported, uh, which is nice. So first, uh, let's say that we want to know the sum of the total uh, price paid, so the price that uh, has been successfully sold over the months. Okay, so let's click the price paid. And you can see by default, they gave us a number. Okay, and now let's say we want to see the, the total price per month. So we drag the sale. Or we select the sale, actually, sorry. We can select the sale. And now you can see um, QuickSight is smart enough to know to give us a line chart. Okay, and now let's say we want the sale at the month level. Okay, so that the total sale that is per month. Okay, and let's also uh, make that as currency. So those are the dollars. Okay, and here to add forecast is very important. Is is very easy. Just click this uh, menu, and also let's add a forecast. Okay, uh, you can choose uh, those parameters that appear to look forward and also look backward, and let's just choose automatic. Okay, and now you can see that now we have the forecast. Uh, so if you click the categories, and you will see that uh, the, the the price, total price in different category. Okay, um, if you don't, let's we can also simply remove that uh, from the uh, colors. Okay, uh, let's add a new visualization. So for this one, we want to know the number of the categories. So if I choose categories, you can see by default, they are counting the number of the categories right now at the sales record level. And we know that that will be duplicated because we want to count the number of the events, okay, at the, for each category. So here, let's drag the event ID to the values, and you can see they are counting the number of events. However, there's nothing being changed because they are counting the duplicated events. So here, let's say we want to count the distinct. Okay, so now we can say we have actually less than 5,000 pop events, okay, which uh, sounds normal. All right, and next, let's say we want to see the price of the sale over time, over different places. So let's add a new visual. Okay, and actually let's drag those two visuals at the bottom. Let's drag the line chart here. Okay, uh, let's just keep this one first. For this one, we want to see for different cities, what are the total price. And I want to see that one as a map. Okay, and now you can see those are the total price sold in different cities. Again, let's change the format into currency. Okay. Um, and also let's see uh, with dollars. Okay. And we also want uh, to see that at is a thousand. Okay, so that will be easier to see. Okay, so those are the total price over time. All right. Uh, so here we just used one of the um, AR functions that is forecast. So let's bring another um, AR function that is called anomaly detection. So here let's add inset. We want to see if there are anything that is going wrong. Okay, so for this anomaly detection, we need the date. Let's see the total price paid and also in different category. Let's get start. 
And we can also have the option that do you want to find out anomaly for these three variables only, or do you want to for the combine of all those variables? So let's see, all combination of all those variables. Okay. Um, and also you can choose uh, a currency each single day, etc. Uh, you can also select do you want uh, uh, the other categories? I say yes. Okay, I also choose city as into the consideration. Uh, so now I click OK and also I write. Okay, so this will take uh, a few minutes. So let's, I want to bring this one to the bottom. Okay. All right. Uh, so here let's add another instead. So for this one, I want to make a metric comparison. Okay, specifically, I want to compare that over time, the difference between total price sold and also total price listed. And this one is pretty faster. We can see that for total price in this year, okay, so the, uh, it's much lower than the total price being listed. Okay. Uh, so this one is very faster, but you can give it, uh, so that can give you some descriptions on your um, dashboard. Okay, here remember that the total price paid is always lower than the total price listed. That is because we kind of duplicated the listed total price. So that is number one reason. Okay, so this comparison actually is not accurate. Okay. Uh, but if you want to change those comparisons, so you need um, to make a more complicated calculation. So I'm not going to do that here. But keep in mind that this actually is not accurate. So if you remember the table that we just saw earlier. All right. Because, again, uh, for multi we have multiple sales for the same listing so that the total list, the total price listed have been duplicated, so this is not an accurate result. Okay, uh, so in addition to those visualizations, so if we go to those insights, we can see they also give you some automatic insight, so that might be helpful. Okay, so for example, I think this one is very interesting, so I just add this insight, which is the growth rate, and I put that one a little bit smaller, Okay. All right. So here uh, we have three insights. So those are uh, text text information, so that you can read those informations. Um, and some some we can also customize those uh, uh, text information. So for example, here if we say customize the narrative, uh, you can see. Uh, here, they actually, in for this one, they are using if statement. So if the matrix is greater than zero, so I said that uh, it is higher than, if that matrix is less than zero, that will be lower than, okay? And you can see here, if that is higher than, we can also change, customize the colors. Okay, so let's use... Uh, green color. Uh, so if that is lower than, let's also uh, change the colors. So here let's use a red color. Okay, and now you can see here uh, how that looks like. And let's see. Okay, and now we see that uh, we have those anomaly detection being uh, finished. Okay, so we can explore the anomalies. Uh, so here we did see an anomaly has been identified that on that day, which I think makes sense because that is the last year of the last day of the year. Okay, and you can see those uh, contributions. So that category name. So um, so the problem is for the pop. Okay, and also the other dimensions to contribute. Okay, uh, so like uh, biodema decreased, 
a lot on that day for the pop. Okay, and pop also decreased a lot. Uh, the sale on Bell Demon also decreased, and also on New York also decreased. So those are the reasons that why we have very low sale on that day. Okay, um, so that is our dashboard. Another feature that I also want to show you is that actions. So for example, here we select this bar chart, and now if we go to actions, so we can enable this bar chart as a filter. So let's say define customer action, okay? And we can call it select catalog, and that is the field action that will apply to all the fields, to all the uh, uh, visuals. Okay, the scope with all the fields and also to all the visuals. So now let's save. So now if we look at the pop, okay, and we can see that all the other categories has been updated, like uh, the, the prediction for the pop and also the total price uh, for the pop in different places, okay, and also inside and also growth rate. And let's look at the others. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Okay, and finally, let's also share um, this dashboard. So let's go to share dashboard. Again, make sure you're using your last name. Okay, and first name, and also lab four. So as a dashboard. Okay. Uh, make sure you share this one with the instructor, so that is WRXX. Okay, so that is WRXX at gmu.edu. And you can just give me, give me permission as a viewer. That should be fine. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so now you have this uh, dashboard being shared, um, and also the other uh, user that has been shared with those uh, dashboards, can check the foundations. <laughs> Uh, which is also fully interactive.